I just want to make a quick video um, to show how to write some code from scratch um, with the objective of incrementing a counter by either one point, two points, or three points, depending on which, which input is pressed. Um, this is for uh, somebody that I'm working with that has a, a project uh, where they're building kind of a counter system using pressure pads. Um, but for this code, we're just going to use um, buttons as sort of a stand-in. So we're going to go through how to write um, the basic counter code from scratch that reads um, external buttons and then uses that to increment a counter. And then I'm going to show you real quickly how to breadboard that up, and then we're going to test it out and, and make sure that it works. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to declare um, a bunch of variables, all the variables that we need for the program to function. Um, the first thing that we're going to need is we're going to need an integer, which is the button pins. And then we're also going to need another integer, which is the reset pin. So we're also going to have a reset button. Um, so for button pins, we have three buttons. So we're going to say that we're going to make an array of three. For reset pin, we just have one pin. Um, we're going to set that to six. And then for these, we're going to do three, four, and five. Um, and then the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create some variables to keep track of uh, the states of our buttons and the previous states of our buttons. So these are going to be booleans because buttons can either be on or off. Booleans are true or false. So I'm going to do a boolean which is a but states. I'm going to make three of them and then we're going to have another one which is past but states. And then we're going to have a reset state. And then, oops, a past reset state. Great. And then um, in the setup, which is where we're going to write all the code that executes once the Arduino or microcontroller is booted, and then only once, we're going to um, set all of our buttons as inputs. So we're going to do pin mode, which allows the Arduino to read what's going on with the buttons as opposed to trying to output some sort of signal to it. And we're going to do but states 0 and then input uh, pull up. And then by setting this um, pull up flag right here, input pull up, it means that we're going to use an internal pull up resistor so that our buttons are going to be more stable. They're not going to be floating when they're not being pressed. Um, we could do this in an array, but we're going to be kind of lazy. We're going to copy and paste it here, and we're just going to do the same for our other button pins. So but states 0, 1, and 2, and then for this guy, that's going to be our reset pin. So reset pin. All right, next thing we want to do is we want to create a, um, a serial port. So this allows us to print information, do some debugging. So we're going to do a serial begin, 57600, so speed there. And then within the main loop, then we're going to um, actually read the buttons and increment the counter. Oh, that reminds me, we forgot about our counter. Uh, so we have an int counter equals zero. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a for loop. So we're going to basically iterate through our three buttons and then figure out what their state is. So if int i equals 0, i is less than 3, there's three buttons, and then we increment i each time through the loop. Um, then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our past but states equal to but states. And this allows us, this is going to allow us to see changes in, in our button state and allow us to act upon those. Then we're going to insert some logic in here. So we're going to say if our, um, oh, well, before that, we're going to actually update our button state value. So we have our but states i equals digital read but pin i. Great. So we have a new reading. Now we can say if the if our new reading is different from our previous reading, and so this uh, double ampersand means double logic. So the, the what needs to be what is on the left of it needs to be true as well as what's on the right. So the other thing we're checking for is that if our but states so if our new state is low which means the button is actually being pressed as opposed to being released. So if both of those are true, that means the button is actually pressed. So now we can take our counter and we can increase it by i plus 1. And this is because our first button is going to have an index of 0. 
Um, so, and our first button corresponds to one point added to the counter. So zero plus one equals one. If the first button is pressed, the counter will be incremented by one. If the second button is pressed, which I will be equal to one if it's the second button, then it will be one plus one is two, and the counter will be incremented by two, and so on for the third button. So great, so we got the counter working now. And then the other thing that we want to do is we want to um, make sure that we check the, re the reset button as well. It's going to be um, almost the same logic, so we're going to take our past reset state. We're going to make it equal to our reset state. Oops, if I can type. And then we're going to make our reset state equal to digital read, reset pin. And then we're going to say if our past reset state is not equal to our reset state, oops, and if reset state equals low, then you make the counter equal to zero. All right. Cool. Now, in theory, this should work, but what we want to do is we want to be able to print out some information so we can ensure that it actually is working. So what we'll do here is once we increment the counter, we'll say counter increased to um, print ln counter. So we will say the counter is increased to and then give the counter number. And if the counter is reset, then we'll say serial print um counter has been reset to and then print ln counter great and then the other thing that we want to do is this code is going to be running blazingly fast thousands of times a second and and that's going to cause some issues because buttons are mechanical devices and then when you actually press a button it's going to make a contact um, several times within a fraction of a second and if your program is running too fast it's going to catch each of those individual contacts as button presses so what we're going to do is we're just going to slow down the program by putting in a delay uh, 40 milliseconds. So it's going to read the button presses, it's going to wait for 40 milliseconds, and then it's going to um, read them again. All right, so that's pretty much it in terms of the code. So we're going to hit the verify button here. It's going to want us to save it. So we're going to save it as um, uh, counter lesson. Great. And then it's going to compile. It's going to see if there's any issues. And it says, yes, there's an issue. The, I don't know what button butt pin is i don't know what this variable is which uh, makes sense let's go up here we have butt pins instead of butt pins that's a little mistake there so i'll just add an s to that and then we'll verify again see if there's any other mistakes um oh looks like we forgot a semicolon here so we add that semicolon we'll compile again see if there's any other mistakes and then we're good So it, it did throw, sorry, I was, I was reading it. So it did throw one, one sort of warning here. It says, ISO C++ forbids comparison between pointer and integer. So that means we're making some sort of a uh, comparison between two different variable types. So we're going to get some weird, bizarre behavior from there. So let's go see what, it, what line it's, it is. So it says it's line 25. And it says that we're, we're comparing past button states against button states. It doesn't know what to do because we're comparing the array against an indice in the other array. So we just needed to add that I in there. We'll verify again, make sure that we're all good to go. Now we're all good to go. All right. So I'm going to stop this video, go show you the breadboard, and let's, let's go test out this code and see if it works. All right, so I was able to move on over to my workbench here. Spent a few minutes just breadboarding up this simple circuit. So we have four buttons, one for the reset, one point, two point, three point. Every single one of these buttons has one side of it going to the ground, which is then connected to the teensy ground. And then the other side of the buttons are going to the input pins, pins three, four, and five for the buttons, which are our pressure pads, and then six for the reset. And um, now we can go back to their code here. We have it plugged in via USB to our computer. And then we're going to uh, hit the upload button here. 
upload the code. Great, my computer says that it has uh, finished uploading, which is fantastic. So now I'm gonna open the serial monitor here. All right, and then let's see if I can get everything in frame here. Great, now let's test it out. So I'll press the one point. Oh, you can see a printout, it says button zero is pressed, counter is now one, counter is now two, counter is three. We'll try the two points, five, seven, great. We'll try three points, 10, 13, amazing. And then the reset button. Boom, counter is now zero. All right, um, hopefully that helps in terms of how to write the code for a basic counter and then how to increment the counter by one, two, or three points depending on which input is being used as well as adding a reset. All right, have a good one.